I mean, obviously, there's a lot of breaking news. We've got the southern border. We've got um, Afghanistan. What's going on in Afghanistan? Yep. We've got the uh, infrastructure bill that is apparently doesn't have a whole lot to do with infrastructure still, mm -hmm. even though uh, this first one has a lot more in it about infrastructure than the next one coming up. Well, I wonder what percentage, if we could break it out percentages. I don't know what it is. I just, if someone knows, chat, you know, chat that in. I don't use our little, our chat box there. Oh yeah, I forgot um, to tell you about that. Yeah. Chat on the right yeah. or underneath, depending just, on the I'm just platform curious what on. that is. Yeah, well, Scott was just telling us the, the, the bill is 2,400 pages long. Yeah. And you know, the, the senators and the Congress people there, they're not reading that whole thing. They have staff that reads it for them. Sure. <clears throat> so there's going to be things that are going to be missed. I know Scott had mentioned that um, towards the end, there's a thing about cryptocurrency in there that they have to report all transactions to the IRS because cryptocurrency, although they call it currency, isn't considered currency. No. It's a, an asset. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it has nothing backing it. I mean, it's not currency is backed by something. Right. So yeah. when you buy and sell crypto, it's going to be just like any other uh, stock or solid asset. You're going to pay capital gains on it. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're trying to figure out ways to uh, tax everything. Well, sure. So keep that in mind if you own any uh, crypto stuff. So uh, unemployment came out today and it was below expectations. It was like 300 and Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 345,000 uh, claims. They were expecting 365, so it's yeah, actually but... below expectations. That's good. And then continuing claims. I mean, we're down uh, 2.6 uh, or 7 million. Uh, so those those continue, continue to go down. But you're still going to have a lot of people that are sitting on the sidelines, depending on where they are. And then certain industries that didn't really come back. Uh, from this, you may or may not want to come back <laughs> yeah. if you're employed well, in that industry. Yeah, I mean, that depends industry. Depends on how old you are and you're close to retirement anyway, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the people who are the owners of whatever industry, you know, that is, the you know, the small business, are they too heavily regulated or is it too onerous right now to, to even come back? No, I know. I, I, I really feel uh, sorry for New York, California folks that uh, are in small hospitality businesses, uh, gyms, that type of thing that I tell you, they're, they're really trying to mm -hmm. kill the small business guy down there. Not, not only that, uh, they're putting on these new mask regulations and mandates and vaccinated and unvaccinated and they're making the business owners police it. Yeah. I mean, that, the first of all, they're not qualified for it. Yeah. And they're having a hard time finding enough employees as it is. Now you're going to have to hire somebody else just to be the. Well, just on that note. So I read the, uh, I had nothing else better to do. I read the report from the white house of, you know, the back and forth between, it was like Dr. Murphy, Fauci, and then another one. I can't remember. It starts with a W. Uh, but anyway, I just like read the report cause I didn't watch it. And what was interesting to me, what I took away from that, again, this is my own opinion. Uh, it seemed like they were encouraging people to basically shame others or to, you know, to, you know, basically comply with no question. Right. And, you know, my, my personal belief is, you know, com well, d d co comply demanded compliance is freedom lost. Yes. I mean, a hundred percent, but that's just well, my opinion. Um, I'm, I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're no longer dividing each other. <laughs> so interest rates have been uh, kind of flat uh, this week. Yeah. Uh, hadn't changed much. I think 30 years uh, to 2.8 something. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. 15 is in the what? Two, two, two. It's, yeah. Low twos. It's still yeah. like two and a quarter. So, so nothing's changed there. And mortgage applications are still down. Mm -hmm. uh, those people that have refinanced have already refinanced. Yeah, more, yeah, um, and inventory still, yeah, and, still down. And the applications for purchase are down. It's only because of lack of inventory. Well, it's lack of, you know, we, we talked about this last time, but lack of inventory, but also lack of qualified people or qualified applicants to afford those homes, like, right. like being priced out of 
being priced out of a home. Like, I can't remember if I shared this last week or not. I thought I did about my, you know, Zillow offering my neighbor over fifty thousand dollars more than what they would have listed it for with an agent. <laughs> like, people are just getting priced out of homes. Yeah, I, I think I, um, the FHFA has decided to allow rental histories as part of the qualifying for Fannie Freddie loans and the uh, automated underwriting which uh, apparently they didn't because it wasn't on the credit. It wasn't figured in as part of the, yeah. Now you still had to get a verification of rent mm -hmm. to show that you were paying on time, but they have an algorithm in a computer when they underwrite you. Um, to get their D DTI. Yeah. Right. And now it's going to be included in that, which they didn't include before. Uh, that's something to keep an eye on with the, um, rental history mm -hmm. with the people that weren't paying rent during COVID and the landlords are saying, Hey, no, they didn't pay me squat. Yeah. <laughs> How's that going to affect them now? That uh, might be an incentive to make sure that they get their rent paid on time. Mm -hmm. um, oil prices are, are dropping. It's down to $63 a barrel. And earlier in the week, it was still in uh, 67, $68 a barrel. So I yeah. think that's a little more of a reflection on how the economy is kind of slowing up a little bit. When you look at the, consumer uh, uh, numbers, uh, the January or July sales and August, well, they haven't got the August sales yet, but uh, July sales were down a little bit. Yeah. The good news is uh, big business, uh, industrial sales and CapEx spending on businesses are still going pretty high. Mm -hmm. So the consumer is holding yep. back a little bit, but businesses are spending money. Anticipating. Because, because they're assuming there's going to be some growth. And then we've got, you know, the obvious um, supply chain issues that are going to be worked out um, and at that's, some point. I mean, that that's honest. That, that came up today when I was uh, chatting with a potential equity deal that we were doing. I mean, it was a, it's a new construction and that was the whole, you know, core focus of the conversation was supply chain issues. Um, overruns on costs, overruns on time, you know, what would be the, you know, potential of capital calls, et, et cetera, right. you know, of, of going on that because that's the number one focus right now is supply chain and costs. Yeah. So uh, last week we did a little walk around Rock Hill and we have a builder that mm -hmm. is uh, building a couple of homes here right now. One of them is one that we financed and is a spec home. Yeah. And the other one is already sold. Yep, sold he, for three thirty nine. And he's well. I'm talking about the the new construction. Oh, the new one. That's okay. That so yeah. It's, it was pre sold, mm -hmm. and uh, we're assuming the borrower got the financing for it. So here's the deal: <clears throat> if the borrower has gotten the, the financing for it, and I wonder what his contract was like. We need to talk to him about that. Yeah. Did he um, leave it kind of open ended on what the prices are going to be? Uh, so. Uh, uh, you know, you're giving them a price. Yeah. Is it going to, you're going to be able to hit that target by the time you finish the house. Yeah. <clears throat> if uh, it's not pre-sold like the house we're doing, he can sell it for whatever, whatever he wants when he finishes. Sure. You know, based on what it cost him. But if you've made a commitment to somebody, is there something in that contract that says, you would uh, have to have the materials. Have come, yeah. And, there and have then how does the bank do that? They have to make sure they got enough money in the well. I mean, when you own account, yeah. I mean, and, and what's your contingency budget? You know, yeah. most people don't go over five percent on the contingency, and, and honestly, two or three is pretty typical. Yeah, on contingencies, uh, just extra cash that you keep in the account just for overruns. Uh, well, as we know, things are a lot more expensive. I know. Um, <laughs> I know it's like a track home builder is actually in Savannah. And they're you know building new homes, and basically. They were changing the price by, I think it was five or ten thousand dollars every month. So if you got in in July, you know at X price, the next month would be ten thousand dollars more. And they have a better control over their material costs because it's right. it's a like a community of like two hundred homes. They're all right. track homes, so even they were increasing the prices by five to ten grand. Well, some other things they might start doing too is just giving them a fixed credit for appliances instead of putting them in themselves. Mm -hmm. Say here, I'm going to give you, this is the amount I'm spending on 
appliances. I'll give it to you, you can buy your own. Yeah. And then a lot of people would do that because they wanted upgraded appliances anyway, but now they're sure. doing it because, you know, you never know what the appliances are going to cost by the time it's ready to put it in the house. Yeah. 